1950 was the beginning of a new decade where the Great Depression was becoming a faint memory and families were moving out into the suburbs. The average house price was $1,950 and gas prices averaged at 22 cents per gallon. The Great Brinks robbery, one of the largest heists in U.S. history, occurred on January 17th. Eleven men stole more than $1 million from the Brinks Armored Car Headquarters in Boston. This group of men, wearing masks, used keys to walk through five locked doors, walked into the counting room, tied up the employees at gunpoint, filled 14 bags with money, and disappeared. The job took a year and a half to plan and 17 minutes to carry out. On January 24th, Jackie Robinson signed the highest contract in Dodger history at a total of $35,000. This made him the highest paid man in the history of the franchise up until then. He ended up playing with the Dodgers until he retired. On January 31st, President Harry Truman publicly announced support for the development of the hydrogen bomb. Two and a half years later, Mike, the first hydrogen bomb, was successfully detonated. The first credit card charge was made on February 8th by Frank McNamara who started the Diners Club. The card made out of cardboard allowed members to charge the cost of their meals. This was the first modern credit card and would change the financial lives of Americans in the years to come. On February 15th, Disney's Cinderella premiered in Boston. It quickly became one of the highest grossing movies of that year. Silly Putty was introduced as a toy on March 6th, and it was instantly popular. Kids found many uses for it, and especially liked flattening it against a comic book page, because it picked up a perfect copy of the print it touched. On May 1st, Gwendolyn Brooks became the first African American to be awarded with the Pulitzer Prize. She won the Pulitzer for her second book of poetry, named Annie Allen. On June 17th, Dr. Richard Lawler performed the first successful kidney transplant on a woman with polycystic kidney disease. The patient went on to live five more years. On June 25th, the Korean War began its three-year conflict when troops of North Korea invaded South Korea. President Truman sent support to South Korea two days later. On June 29th, the U.S. soccer team beat England 1-0 in a World Cup game and it was considered one of the greatest World Cup upsets of all time. The U.S. team would not qualify for another World Cup until 1990. July 1st saw the first U.S. soldiers being flown to South Korea, and a couple of days later, the Battle of Osan took place in South Korea. This was the first time U.S. forces entered combat in the Korean War. Mm -hmm. 
Beverly Cleary published her first children's book called Henry Huggins on September 6th. It was the first in a series of fictional chapter books about Henry, his dog Ribsy, his neighborhood friend Beezus, and her little sister Ramona. On October 2nd, the very first Peanuts comic strip written by Charles Schultz appeared in seven newspapers. The very first strip was four panels long and showed Charlie Brown walking by two other young children, Shermie and Patty. The musical Guys and Dolls premiered on Broadway on November 24th, where it ran for 1,200 performances and won the Tony Award for Best Musical. On the weekend after Thanksgiving, the eastern United States was hit by a storm that became known as the Great Appalachian Storm. After it was over, up to 57 inches of snow fell, and it was one of the most damaging wind events ever recorded. During this storm, the Big Ten football championship between Michigan and Ohio State took place in Columbus, Ohio. 50,000 spectators watched the kickoff in heavy snow, 40 mile per hour winds, and a temperature of 5 degrees. The Snow Bowl, or Blizzard Bowl as it came to be known, saw Michigan prevail 9-3. On December 13th, a Pepsi advertisement features a new actor named James Dean and is the beginning of his short but notorious acting career. During the commercial, he danced around a jukebox while singing a Pepsi jingle. Dean caught the eye of the producer who chose to put him in a television special called Hill No. 1. Dean only had a couple of lines in the special, but those lines were enough to seal his future. A couple of years later, he would star in Rebel Without a Cause. <laughs> 